In the center of the Mediterranean Sea lies an island lined with postcard pretty beaches and sapphire blue waters. With its unique natural landscape and its easygoing summer lifestyle, Crete has become one of the world's most popular vacation spots. But despite its popularity, Crete has kept many of its treasures secret, known only to the few and the privileged that take the time to really know the island. When I get off the aeroplane, my heart skips. I mean, I kind of feel instantly happy. It is quite extraordinary that a place can have that kind of effect on you. It's this big world in the middle of the sea. When you're tired of the sea, you go a little bit inland and then you discover all these beautiful historical places and this monastery and the villages. And there are shepherds and there are there are vines and there are olive trees, and you know that this way of life has been going on for 5,000 years. This is the Cretan way of life, living close to nature and its treasures. A mild climate, a beautiful landscape, and the fruits of the earth. Looking around the Cretan landscape, one immediately sees the holy alliance that is at the center of the Cretan diet. Everywhere you look, you will see vineyards next to olive orchards, grapes growing next to olives. It all started thousands of years ago when a great civilization flourished on this island. This was the time of the Minoans, the first sophisticated society to appear on European soil 2,000 years before Christ. In the luxurious, multi-storied palaces of the Minoans, we find the earliest evidence for large-scale, systematic wine production in Europe. Colorful wall paintings from the palaces, like snapshots of life from 4,000 years ago, show ancient Cretans enjoying wine more or less as we do today. But they were not the only ones. Archaeologists have discovered that Cretan wine was exported by ship to Egypt the most powerful nation in the Mediterranean. The ancient Greeks were the first to develop what today we would call a wine culture. Their particular type of wine party, known as the Symposium, became very popular around the ancient world. And so Dionysus, the Greek god of wine, conquered the Mediterranean, making wine drinking a part of everyday life. Soon the wines of Crete became a sought-after commodity and found their way to markets from the Red Sea to the Rhone Valley in what today is France. The Roman Empire later changed from pagan to Christian, and with it, so did the people of Crete. But their love for the vine and its divine fruit did not change. In fact, wine had become so important for the island and its people that it soon found its way into the world of religion. In this icon, found in a medieval Cretan monastery. Christ is painted as a vine, and his disciples are painted as the branches that bear the fruit. The details of the painting show how well this painter knew the vine. His family probably made their own wine, like generations before them, in a tradition that remains alive to this day. It was this tradition that helped the island's wine culture survive. It was the making of family wine that kept the knowledge and the love for making wine alive. This knowledge, this love, has now been passed on to a new generation of winemakers who are dedicated to introduce Cretan wine to the world once again. Scattered around the valleys between the high mountain ranges and the sea that surrounds them, the modern traveler finds the boutique wineries that are changing the face of Cretan wine. Established by previous generations, 
These wineries are now run by young people who are setting new standards and new goals. Growing up inside the vineyards and then acquiring modern skills at centers of global wine production, Cretan winemakers know what wine lovers around the world are looking for and how to make it. In order to tap into the international market, local wineries have been developing international varieties for decades. But Cretan winemakers know that their advantage lies in the place itself. The rain that falls throughout the autumn and winter months infuses the earth with the essence of herbs, the smells of flowers, the taste of fruit and vegetables growing on its surface. Experts from all over the world come here to suggest ways of making the best out of what the land has to offer. Premièrement, la Crète, c'est une merveille pour un géologue. Le fait qu'il y ait eu plutôt une agriculture traditionnelle fait que les sols ont encore une possibilité qui n'a pas été modifiée. Et de ce côté-là, la Crète, potentiel énorme, typicité, très grande typicité. Et à partir de là, quand on fait fonctionner le sol, on se met dans les conditions de qualité d'un raisin, mais qui demande un grand savoir très pratique, journalier. Et comme je viens de voir les vignes là, depuis des années je les vois, je les vois, je dis, le job est bien fait. Feeling confident that their wine is of the highest standard, Cretan winemakers are trying to let the world know about it. And the world is taking an interest. So Crete can really play a good role because of the excitement of the products they can offer. I mean, these are wines you cannot find anywhere else in the world and uh, that speaks to a lot of wine drinkers. I just returned from New York two weeks ago and I've met dozens of people there. And for me, there is nothing better than to taste wines with people who have never had Greek wines before and then see their reaction. And when they taste these wines, it's like the, the big surprise of how well structured these wines are. And that really counts abroad. People do embrace this kind of style. People think Greek is a Mediterranean clima and uh, is uh, probably very hot and the uh, wine are oxidized or fed or high in alcohol and uh, then when you come to Greece you realize it's totally not true. So the wines are very fresh. Uh, some wines are fresher than Swiss wines and German wines. Crete is like a treasure chamber for varieties. It's a young generation of winemakers that try things differently and that really go out and they search for these long forgotten varietals and revive them. And I think that these are very exciting projects indeed. The impression is a bit similar to Santorini with the freshness. I taste Vidiano and this wine is fermented in oak. And this gives this wine more complexity, so more different aromas and also the structure in the mouth is more interesting. But uh, you can still feel the freshness, you can believe it, that this wine can grow on this place. And there are you know, many producers who have just put in a lot of work over the last year and the results are really starting to show. And there is a, a lot of commitment from the growers there to strive for the best quality. And I think that is all needed and I think Crete will play a very important role over the next years. The amount of varieties that we have on the island will allow us to make uh, many different wines with many different characters. And one of the most uh, important and the most interesting varieties in Crete is uh, Vidiano. And this variety has very nice aroma, very fruity for uh, young wine. 
And that is also the reason it's doing so well in the United States and abroad. It, it has been recently recognized in international magazines and awarded, uh, so it's working very well. Vidiano is not the only variety that is making a name for itself in the world of wine. White wines made from a local grape called Villana have recently gained recognition both at home and abroad. And there are others waiting to be discovered. An ideal companion to Mediterranean dishes is Cotifali, a local red variety with strong character and intense aromas. This aromatic variety has been blended successfully with another red from Crete, famous for its color, Mandelari. We're playing with all the varieties because that's our focus. We're, we're trying to show the world what the treasures of Crete are. Blessed by a climate that combines the highest European average of sunshine throughout the year with mild temperatures in spring and summer and plentiful rainfall in autumn and winter, the land of Crete has always been ideal for growing fruit and vegetables organically. This is the secret of the Cretan diet. Everything has sprung from the purest soil. Everything has grown in the gentle warmth of the Cretan sun. I travel all over the world, always looking for the same thing that's so hard to find. I'm looking for something that's authentic, something that's filled with tradition. Crete is one of the few places I know in the world that you can get to <laughs> where the tradition really lives every day. And this is something that's manifest in the food, in the wine, and in the way that people live. This is like taking the most basic elements that nature has given you and turning it into a vast museum of possibilities. It's only people who are really creative and really resourceful and in a way really deeply happy with who they are and what they have that can make a cuisine like this. wonderfully hospitable people who are actually very interesting and have time to listen and really wonderful food. I mean, because we do love the food here. We do. Wonderful elemental food. Cretan food is exceptional. And wines, when you drink them, they're very different and they have their own character. Very much. And, and the weather, of course, is just marvellous. And we've brought our children here every year for 35 yeah. years and they are still coming. It all goes together in a very happy way. But also, there is no point in drinking the wine unless you're drinking it with friends. And so that is part of the pleasure. You know, I come from uh, New York City, and if you want to make something happen at 8 or 9 o'clock at night, you have to start planning three weeks in advance. But in Crete, it's 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night, I don't know what the plans are. And somehow every night there's going to be people at a table and they're going to be enjoying food and wine for hours and really good traditional food. And that's just the way of life. It's better, I think, to focus on the local varieties and they have slightly different characters from grape to grape. The first time I tasted Kotsifali, I, I fell in love with it. I tasted a bottle that was four or five years old, and first thing was, wow, this is kind of light and elegant. And second thing was, wow, this kind of smells like a 20-year-old Italian wine. In four or five years, you can start to smell the leather and the earth and the forest floor. Oh, that's great. I was also amazed by the gracefulness of the whites that I tasted. They had really good acid, they were really crisp, they weren't high in alcohol. The world 
of wine is changing a great deal. Everyone thinks about Cretan wine as something that could go global, and it can. Wine, um, in its most classic sense, should be balanced and harmonious and elegant, full of flavor, but not something that, you know, hits you upside the head. This is something that uh, Crete does extremely well. Now, of course, Crete could change its winemaking and could make bigger and richer wine trying to catch the global market, but I hope they don't. And I don't see a lot of evidence of it, so, so far I'm happy. Cretan wine is not very well known in the international market, but uh, I think in the past year the feedback we get from uh, people who taste Cretan wine is uh, very, uh, very good, and uh, it keeps us hoping for the future. When I give somebody a wine to taste and I get a huge compliment, it's all I need to uh, keep going uh, for another year, to keep trying. Every day you see something new, something different, especially working with the uh, Cretan varieties that are so ancient, which is very exciting. It's like bringing to life a part of uh, history.